A question tonight, can you actually measure the emotional outpouring in a worldwide crisis? Sometimes scientists think that they have done just that. Their machines and computers found a bizarre pattern right after several global disasters. Most people have heard of the random number generator studies through the Global Consciousness Project. Because there is this resonant effect through the force, if you want to look at it that way, through this entangled, interwoven consciousness field. Emotional focus of millions of people on a single event like 9-11 may form a global consciousness. We are consciousness, infinite awareness, having an experience. And that consciousness can be as vast as or as tiny as we can be manipulated. They knew the science of consciousness is real. Does consciousness interact directly with the physical world. To answer that question, Dr. Nelson and his colleagues deployed dozens of instruments around the world, random number generators. And then in 9-11, it begins not being a drunkard's walk. It goes like this for two days. It may sound bizarre, but Dr. Nelson and his team have been at this for the better part of a decade. The first spike showed up in 1997 with the death of Princess Diana. Other events like the Concorde crash, the Madrid train bombing, and the Pope's funeral all registered on those random number generators. But early on the morning of September 11th, the data went off the charts. Roger Nelson at, at Princeton got the idea that maybe intention was only a piece of the puzzle and maybe attention was also important. But the act of attending, which we think of internally, at, attending is a kind of coherent mental state. You're focusing in on one thing. And if that, if we can think of that as not simply being in your head but being out there as well, then when you attend to something, it changes and it changes in a direction of coherence. So if the target of your attention is randomness, then a cohered random system is, by definition, more orderly, becomes ordered. Today, there are over 60 random event generators placed around the world. The numbers that come into the generators during normal random events for global consciousness are just that, random. Jeff Scargill, a research astrophysicist with NASA, admires the team's use of scientific method, but questions its results. It's finding patterns in random data. The, the nature of randomness is that any pattern uh, that you want to choose ahead of time will eventually show up, and uh, just as an accident. Could happen by chance, but the chance is like one in a million or one in some really large number. How does it work, and what does it all mean? Even the scientists don't know. The implications go beyond science into philosophy and religion. All we know is this. At this very moment, around the globe, the random number generators keep flipping those virtual coins, waiting to record our collective reaction to the next major world event.
1997, I started doing something which turned into what we now call the Global Consciousness Project, which is looking at the entire world in a way, uh, we're using our same kind of technology we developed in the lab. So he started doing experiments where he'd take a random number generator, an electronic circuit, and put it in the vicinity of a group that was meditating, thinking that this would create a, a large amount of coherent attention. Sometimes people knew the random generator was there and sometimes they didn't know. And he wanted to see whether the randomness would become orderly during the meditation. And after hundreds of such tests by Roger and me and a bunch of our colleagues, we came to the conclusion that it does become less random in a context where we can infer that there's mental coherence going on, sometimes due only to attention. On September 11th, a few hours before the first plane struck, this network of random number generators became more coherent, less random and more coherent. This is as close as we can get to the base of the World Trade Center. You can see the firemen assembled here, the police officers, FBI agents, and you can see the two towers. A huge... In the case of the September 11th World Trade Center attacks in New York, the REGs measured a warning spike four hours in advance of the first plane strike and continued measuring the ensuing events and public reactions. Deep feelings of compassion enveloped the world and a 50-hour trend ensued in the data, reflecting the profound effects of the event itself. After 9-11, uh, working with Princeton University and some other researchers, what they began to find is that there was a large spike in the magnetic fields of the Earth uh, during 9-11 that is now attributed to the, the mass collective outpouring of heart-based emotion from hundreds of millions of people who witnessed the tragedy. There are two satellites over the northern hemisphere. Every 30 minutes they send back a signal telling scientists how strong this magnetic field of the Earth is. It's important because all life is connected to it. There is no them and us when it comes to the magnetic field of every CEO, of every corporation, every leader of every nation, every blade of grass, every hamster, every goldfish, every human is linked to this field. So what happens, the field is important. And what uh, scientists found is uh, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 15 minutes after the first plane hit the first tower, there was uh, a, a very unusual spike in the strength of the magnetic fields of the Earth attributed to the collective outpouring of human emotion, heart-based emotion, the strongest magnetic generator in, in the body. Several hours in advance of a major world event, non-random, coherent numbers are present. A large spike in the data waveform appears, giving a precognition that a major event is about to occur. I mean, it all devolves back into the question, what is the role of mind in the physical world? From a Western science point of view, there isn't much. I mean, I, I as a, a designer of a car, can get an internal uh, image and an intention to build a car and eventually a car appears. But that's not a direct link. It requires a lot of work between the intention and the building of a car. But this question is saying more that, is there a direct link between one's intention and the behavior of the world? But an unmediated link, or if mediated, we don't know by what yet. For half a century, it's Doc Rabin risked his life to defend his country. Today, he gave his life to bring it a lasting peace. Hours before the November 4th, 1995 assassination of Nobel Peace Prize winner, Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin, a continuous running REG saw a major spike developing which peaked at the time of his murder, reflecting the loss of a true peacemaker and a man of compassion. 
question is, can you create that effect without having a tragedy? Can you create it at will? And this has led the Institute of Heart Math to, uh, to create a project that is called Global Coherence Initiative. Personal coherence is good, global coherence is really good. Thank you.